Hey everybody, Joy here. It is Tuesday, March 22, 2022. I just wanted to come by quickly and tell you we're okay, we're alive and well. Yes, there was a tornado here last night. Yes, it blew down a bunch of buildings and a bunch of trees and electric. We have no electricity except our generator is running. But we are fine. It was five miles north and a couple miles west of us. And we didn't even know it. People started calling and saying, are you okay? And we're like, well, why wouldn't we be? We knew there was a bad storm and we knew there was a tornado watch because our phones told us there was. But we never got a siren and we never got a uh, jump in your shelter notice or anything. We had our stuff ready, our lantern and our flashlights and our water and some towels and our coats and everything ready to go to our storm shelter, but we never heard anything. And then people started contacting us and we're like, well, was there a tornado? <laughs> so yes, there was a tornado and it's scary what it did, but only two people injured, which is amazing from what it did. And I think the tornado was also in Austin, Texas and along I-35 and I don't know about those areas, but we live in Kingston and here in Kingston, we are fine. So, look what came. <laughs> I wanted to show this because this is from Linda Green. And she has been asking me, why haven't you talked about the present I sent you? Did you ever get it? No, we never did get it. She mailed it March 8th. It just came a few minutes ago. I just got it. And the reason it didn't get here until now is it's got the wrong address on it. The numbers of our address are wrong. The street's right, the town's right, but the number of our house is wrong. So that's why it's taken so long to get to us. So, Linda, it is here. I have not looked at it yet, but I'm going to open it up right here in front of everybody. Ooh, I feel a book or something. <gasps> it's a heart. Oh, it was for Valentine's Day. Oh, how cute. She must have a cutter like me. She must have like a cricket or a, a what do you call it? Uh... What's mine called? A scan and cut. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Joy 2022. Now, what a perfect heart is that? I wonder how she cut the heart out. Because this is wood. Linda, tell me how you cut this heart out. Thank goodness it's only like 60 degrees outside today. So we've got all the air conditioners turned off. We have four of them. We have them all turned off. We have all the lights turned off. So the generator will run more days if necessary. You know, if you don't run everything. So I may need to use this for a fan. <laughs> <laughs> so there's still more in here let's see what's left Ooh, a little box let's see what this is isn't it fun to get gifts isn't it fun to get gifts yes here we go hmm let me see she has it so neatly packed I don't want to hurt it it says 47 Oh, it's about our anniversary, and it's an ornament for the tree. Look how cute this is. Look how cute. I wonder how she did that. How did she do this? This is beautiful. Let me see if I can hold it up close enough. Look. Isn't that beautiful? I'm hanging this in the RV. I sure am. Because that's where we had our... Our slumber party, remember? Beautiful. Just beautiful. This is a talented lady. <laughs> that isn't all. Let's see what else is in here. Goodness sakes. How did she do that? Oh, I'm, I'm, oh look, here's a little note. Joy, read the note. Joy, here is some gifts for you. Sorry the Valentine is late. I have also included a gift for your anniversary, Linda Green. Thank you, dear Linda. Awesome to get gifts. I don't know why she would want to send us something, but how sweet. Ooh, these are pretty. These match the RV. How did she know? How did she know these match the RV? Oh, look. Is it a pot holder? I don't know if it's a pot holder. Hold on now. It's made with a pot holder, but 
It's a towel holder upper. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my gosh, would that be fun to make? You guys, I'm going to hold it up close. Let me hold it up close so you can see how it's made. It's really cute. I don't like me up close, so. <laughs> There's the towel. And here's the pot holder folded in half. And it has the loop on the top. And on the back, you can see the pot holder is sewn right across here to hold the towel. And then you fold it up, and it has a button, and it has coffee on it. <laughs> of course it has coffee on it. And so then you hang it over something, and it's a towel holder. Wake up and smell the coffee. I have to make a top to go with that. That is so cute. Now let me see, are there two of them? Oh, here's another one. Look at this one. So this is another pot holder with my colors, it's the color of my towels. I'm pretty sure. Another nice towel, a button. This is a fun thing to make. A fun thing. You know, you could still grab this off the stove and use it for a pot holder. So you see the stitching holding the towel on there it is inside alright you gotta buy a sewing machine if you don't have one and at least make some of these in your life <laughs> how cute is that oh what a sweet sweet gift thank you so much Linda what a sweet sweet gift a valentine a happy anniversary and an RV matching. Wake up and smell the coffee. I'm making myself a shirt to go with that. You hide and watch. I'm going to do it. Okay. Thank you so much. And Linda, our address has a uh, five where you put a zero. Now you put nine two zero. It's nine two five. And then there's another number. 925 okay so you put a zero where there should have been a five and that's why it's I'm, I'm surprised they found us but they did it got here so what am I doing I have the Easter quilt done it will be hanging here by Easter I guarantee it I'm working on the uh, edit a sitar mystery quilt you want to see what I have so far so we're up to block eight today and I have all the blocks done Except for block four, I messed up. I've, I've tried to fix it, but I can't. Uh, it just doesn't work out the way her directions are. I don't know if anybody else has had problems with block four, but I'm waiting for more fabric to come. And today's block eight. I haven't made it yet. But here's all the rest of the blocks so far. What we're making is a kaleidoscope. And it looks to me like it's going to look a lot like her Tahoe quilt, which is oh, amazing. <laughs> We're using a special ruler. The ruler is unbelievably technically challenging or however you want to say it. I don't know how the woman ever made the ruler. She is she is a rocket scientist, let me tell you. Not only with quilts, but evidently she's majorly good with math. Or her husband is. Somebody is. Is that ruler or something else that you do this with? So, it's going to have eight of these. Now, my friend Abandra's making it. and She's got all eight of hers put on her board. But I just have one put on, because I don't want to have to pull them all off the board to sew them together. So today we're doing 16 blocks, and it's the funnest block, the funnest, the most complicated block yet. And I think it goes here and here, I think. We shall see. I think this is going to be another one of these. It's going to be a diamond. But this is going to be a fancy pants quilt. And I wasn't going to do it. I wasn't going to do it. But then Abandra said she was doing it. And you know, when you have a friend, <laughs> whatever they do, you have to do. <laughs> I know. i got to catch up with my friend Viv on making some clothes. My goodness. Viv Mom is a sewing machine factory. She makes so many clothes. She's been making clothes for her daughter because her daughter's getting married. And I'm sure you've all seen it. She gets way, way, way more views than I do. And I think about 8,000 people have already looked at it. But if you haven't seen it, go over to Viv Monceau's on YouTube 
And you can see the gorgeous dresses she made for her daughter. She just whips them up. Her daughter says, oh, I'd like another couple dresses. Okay, fine. Two days later, Boo has them done. <laughs> so, so behind on sewing clothes. But I'm getting quite a few pretty quilts. <laughs> what else do I have to tell you? We're going to go on a trip. April 18th, 19th, some, sometime there. And we're going to meet some new friends. You know what? When you have an RV and you go places, the only place we ever go is to the repair place in Louisville, Texas. But every time we go there, we meet somebody. So we met these people. Their names are Ed and Dallas. The wife's name is Dallas. I said, how'd you get that name? <laughs> so we met them. They live full time in their RV. So we both paid to do this NIRBC get together thing. It's kind of like when everybody gets in a bus and they take you to Branson. Only this, everybody gets in their RV and they drive to a certain place. And then NIRBC has all of these activities there for you. One of them supposedly is a black tie affair. Well, my husband doesn't own a tuxedo or a black tie. And I haven't dressed up in so long. <sighs> I would have to lose, let me see, I weighed 135 when I made that really pretty dress I made for my da, my stepdaughter's wedding. I made a really pretty dress. And it's, I still have it, and it's gorgeous, and it would be fine to wear to that, but I weighed 135 then, and right now I weigh 150. <clears throat> Can you lose that much weight in like two weeks? I don't think so, and I don't even want to. So Jerry and I will probably just sit that one out or sleep that one out. <laughs> But it's at Texas Motor Speedway, Dallas Motor Speedway, something like that, where they race cars. So that's where we're going, and we'll be there for a week. And we're going to meet our friends in their RV the day before. And then we're going to go with each other, one in front of the other. Because as you go into that affair, they will put you together if you come together. So they'll put their RV next to our RV. So then we'll know somebody. Ah, won't that be awesome? I'm so excited. We need to get a dog. Everybody that has an RV has a dog. <laughs> but my, you know, Jerry, every time we have a dog, our dogs run off all the time. We have this gorgeous dog named Max. We named him Maximus. Tammy found him. My, my daughter is a major dog rescuer, people rescuer. And she rescued this dog that was running up and down the street. And um, beautiful, beautiful, great, great paramis, great para something, white, fluffy, gorgeous, long white hair, and blue eyes. The most beautiful dog you ever saw. But that dog was the worst watchdog you ever saw. A criminal could come up here packing guns with a face mask on, and that dog, this great big dog, and he'd run and he'd jump up on you and put his arms around your neck and hug you. <laughs> Some watchdog. <laughs> and not only that, he was forever running around going and meeting all the neighbor dogs. We were forever having to go find him. And so then we got those two black golden doodles, you know. And the one golden doodle was so smart, her name was uh, Josie, and she could dig underneath the fence. Now, Jackie wasn't smart enough. Jackie was her half-sister or her whole sister or something. But um, Josie could go underneath the fence, and she could just go in and out like she wanted to. <laughs> well, Jackie couldn't. But anyway, one day, I decided I was going to take the dogs for a walk up to the mailbox. And they were big dogs, you know, 75 pounds apiece. So I had Jackie on a leash. Those of you who have said, what happened to your dogs? I had Jackie on a leash, and she was big, and she was strong. Well, Jackie was completely controlled by Josie, and they wouldn't leave each other. They always stayed together, they wouldn't leave each other. So I didn't have Josie on a leash. I just had Jackie on a leash. And I thought, well, I'm going to wrap the leash around my waist, and that way... I can hold her with my whole body and my hand. See, does that make sense to you? So I had it wrapped around my waist and holding her with my arm. Well, Josie's jumping around like a wild, crazy dog. Come on, come on, let's run away, let's run away. Let's go down to the lake, let's get all wet and let's get full of stickers. Come on, come on, come on. So Jackie got all excited and pulled me and she knocked me down into the rocks and cut my 
cut my head open. I had a big gash right here on my eye. And it knocked me out. I was completely knocked out. Thank God Terry was here in the house. She was up here using my quilting machine. Jerry was at work. And um, I came to, and Jackie was still attached to me. And I could see the blood all over my white tunic that I had on. And I thought, oh my goodness, what on earth has happened? And so I released the leash and I let Jackie go. And she and Josie went running off down to Lake Texoma. <clears throat> and I got up, brushed myself off, came in the house. And um, Terry took me to the ER, to the hospital. And then Jerry, or, or Jerry came home and took me to the ER. I think she called Jerry. Jerry came home. He took me to the ER. I was in the ER for hours and hours and hours because they found a tumor in the back of my head. They found a lump. Uh, a thing back here and I guess it's you know like a size of a penny or something and so they thought I had a brain bleed from falling and passing out on the rocks and having this gash on my head and they just ignored the gash on my head I laid there for hours and hours and hours this gash on my head they didn't even care they had an ambulance outside waiting to ambulance me to Oklahoma City to a hospital where they could deal with this brain bleed that I supposedly had so it was hours and hours and hours. It was quite an affair. Anyway, called my daughter, told her what was going on. You know, you know, she has a kennel. She and her husband, Lynn, have a kennel, and that's where we got the dogs. He was so sweet. He drove down here. Did he drive down here? He offered to drive down here and go find those dogs and take them home with him. But we said, no, no, no. Jerry said, I'll go home. I'll find the dogs. So by the time Jerry got back from the hospital, the dogs had returned and were, of course, filthy wet and covered with stickers. And um, so we told Lynn, we're going to go ahead and bring the dogs back to you. These dogs are too big for Joy to handle. And um, that they were both sold. They were both sold by the next morning. They were completely house trained. They were beautiful. In fact, we recently got a picture of Josie uh, from the lady that bought her. And um, Josie is full grown and absolutely gorgeous. I'll show you a picture. If I can find it in my phone somewhere, I'll show it to you. But um, she's gorgeous. The woman said she's the best dog. I told you she was smart. She said she's the best dog she has ever owned and she's had all kinds of dogs. All right, I'm going to let you go. I got to go make block number eight for the mystery quilt. She's doing two this year. This is number one. She's doing another one, I think, in May. This is the first one. And so I've got to go do block number eight for the mystery quilt. But I just wanted to say good morning, hello, thank you, Linda Green, for the lovely gifts, and I'll try to be back sooner than usual. Bye for now.